Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm so excited. I've enlisted Angela and I asked her permission to share really an inside look at our training module that we have for our new agents as part of their orientation and onboarding process. And so yesterday we talked about how to use the bill chart. Today she goes over the underwriting grid. And I'm listening to this video as I'm editing it because I was on, when we did the training, obviously I was there. And I'm saying to myself, this every single agent should understand what the three parts of the triangle is. I'm excited that we're able to share this with you. Go in there and watch this. Do me a favor, leave me a comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, and subscribe to the channel. And just digest and understand how to use these bill charts and these underwriting grids. And you should write more policies that get issued and you get paid. Just understand this concept. It really is an amazing 10 minutes of knowledge that she imparts with you. And I'm excited for you. I'm not gonna come back at the end of the video, so I'll just say goodbye now. Appreciate you being here. I'm grateful you take the time out of your day to watch these videos. As we continue to try to put out good quality content for you that we feel that you can use to succeed in this insurance business or to decide whether this is really what you wanna be doing the rest of your life. So again, as I always say, thank you for investing your time, and I hope that we return that favor in value. And God willing, I'll I'll see you on the next video tomorrow. See ya. There are two things to keep in mind. Actually, there are three things to keep in mind when you're putting together, uh, when you book an appointment, right? So you buy yourself some leads, you dial your leads, you book some appointments, and then you turn around and you now have this client qualification sheet. And um, I want you to begin to have an idea of what to do with these sheets to begin to put together what the best options are for that client. The strength of going in to either sit with your client face to face or whether it's virtual and having your options already put together in front of you because it does a few things. It shows your client that you have done some of your due diligence before you, you turned the camera on or before you sat down at their kitchen table. And that is really, in my opinion, one of the really important points. It shows that you are not there to spend your entire time with your face in your phone, right? Or on your laptop or on your iPad, trying to frantically run rates or figure out what the best option is or figure out what they qualify for. So the cornerstone to the know before you go is just that, knowing before you go to the appointment, right? being prepared with what you're going to offer that client ahead of time. So the three pieces that are really the most important are one health, two product, and number three amount. So what we're really trying to do is we're trying to create the perfect triangle between those three things, between someone's health, between the product that they qualify for and the amount that is the most fitting. There are two underwriting guidelines and I'm actually gonna try while we are still on here together to pull these up and then I'll share my screen with you so that you guys can see that. The underwriting guidelines are the first step. They are kind of gonna combine the two points of that, of that triangle, which is health and product. One of the things that typically scares new agents is they feel like, um, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know what products to offer. Oh my God, there's so many products. Oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? Which ones do I show? Don't panic. When, we, when you come down to it, you are really going to end up spending probably 90% of your time um, within six or less products. Not six or less carriers, but six or less total products. The majority of your clients are going to fit into one of those six blocks. Okay. Those six carriers are really going to be able to not only satisfy the majority of the situations that are going to come up, but they are also going to be the stronger products and the stronger carriers that we work with. Some of you that, that love to research and love to look at all those shiny products and carriers that we have and website, there's that big slider bar that goes carrier after carrier after carrier after carrier and lists all these different carriers. That's all wonderful. However, the more that you do this business, the more that you run appointments, you're going to find a comfort level with certain carriers and you're going to realize that they pay you the best. They process your business the, best, the fastest. They're the easiest to work with. Um, they're the easiest to get a response from. It is not necessarily in your, in your client's best interest 
that because you think that a particular company is great and you think that the product is great, uh, that it's the best place to put your client. It may not be, right? It is also sometimes not in your client's best interest to save them a nickel and put them with a company where it's going to take eight weeks for them to get approved and 75 documents later, okay? So you have to balance the concept of what's in the best interest for your client with all of these different factors. And that comes from experience. So I'm going to show you the underwriting guideline tonight. I'm going to show you really, really quickly um, kind of how the grid works. Most of you should have an idea already of how this document works. Most of you should either have it downloaded and printed off, um, but it should become your Bible, okay? And there's two of them. Uh, so let me pull it up here and then this should not be an unfamiliar place to you. I'm gonna zoom down to where the documents are that I want you to uh, focus on. So you go past step one, step two, you're already through contracting. And a lot of what I just talked about with GPM and uh, American Amicable and that kind of thing is all in this contracting module. Getting your bag ready. The first thing that you're going to do when you book an appointment, remember I said that the first thing we want to deal with is health issues, right? So my advice is always find uh, the health issues for your client. Now, you have to be careful with people that have multiple different health issues. So if you have somebody that has diabetes and they've had a limb amputated and they uh, had an aneurysm three months ago, you've, you've got to check. You can't take the first one and say, oh, well, they're okay because for their diabetes with American Amicable. So that's what we're going to go with because the combination of, the, of issues might be more than what the carrier is willing to accept. So on the left-hand side, you're going to see the, the health condition. Now, some of these are kind of obvious, especially because our focus is on what? Non-medical product. That is the world that we live in, guys. That is the world that we live in. One of the things that we'll talk about next week is getting a risk assessment from a carrier. When you call a carrier and they say, well, your client is not eligible for a non-medical product, but they can go fully underwritten, uh, that is not an advantage to you. So we live in the non-medical world. We live in the world where they don't have to take a medical exam, where they don't have to pull medical records. We live on a simplified issue, non-med world. So on the left-hand side, you're going to find uh, their the health condition. And then across, moving across horizontally across the grid, uh, you're going to see the carriers that will accept different different health conditions and and what the stipulations may be. So again, some of these are going to seem somewhat obvious. If someone has AIDS, uh, and that includes HIV, uh, ARC, which is the age-related complex, it's going to be a decline across the board. There isn't a carrier that is going to accept them um, on a non-med basis. There's probably not a carrier that will take them on a, on a medical basis. But Let's say that you're dealing with something that may not be as obvious to you. So let's say that you have somebody that takes um, Xanax and they, because they have anxiety, okay? Very, 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 especially after 2020, very, 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 very common. We look here and for anxiety, so for anxiety, Colombian Financial Group is the first one. Colombian Financial Group is not really a carrier that we use. We use it in very, uh, just we just don't use it very often. There's some quirks to, see, to Colombian Financial Group or CFG, so I tend to stay away from them. Foresters, Foresters says if they have mild anxiety, if they were over the age of 25 when they were diagnosed with anxiety, the onset was more than one year or later. They've never been hospitalized and they didn't have to take time off of work for their anxiety, then they'll be an accept. So what does that tell us? It tells us that if the client was hospitalized uh, in December because their anxiety had reached a level where they couldn't work, that Foresters is not gonna be a good place to take them, right? And then you can move across the grid to figure out where are what are going to be some of the better options for your client. So uh, that is the term and universal life guidelines. We're going to spend much more time over the course of the next three weeks. Um, we're gonna we're gonna spend more time working through these documents, and 
taking your questions and answers. So um, it does not mean I want you to start trying to figure out all of your products and all of your cases on your own, um, but it does mean that you should begin to get familiar with this grid and familiar with how to begin to pick uh, the optimum product and, and uh, carrier for your client. The last thing I wanna show you is the whole life underwriting guideline. So the whole life underwriting guideline, when you look at it, especially on your monitor, is a lighter blue. Okay, so that's your homework for right now. Uh, let's stop the share. There we go. So your homework for the next week is to download to your computer or to your iPad or to your phone. <laughs>